Hey everybody, in today's episode, I wanna talk about design optioning. When would you wanna use design optioning? Well, let's say you're working on a project. You present it to the client and they're like, oh, I really like this, but I want another version of it. So right now, everything's white, right? Maybe the client's like, oh, I want this to be a gray or a black or maybe even red, right? Or maybe they wanna change the geometry. So there's a lot the client can ask for. I'm sure you know. The issue is D5 doesn't have a built-in variant manager. So I have a little workflow here that I think is really useful for generating options. So what I've got here is a project imported from Rhino and I have it on a layer. What I recommend people do is fledge out your option one first. And what I mean by that is apply all the materials because your option two is probably gonna have a lot of the same materials. Let's say like the metals or the glass or the wall paint, right? So you want all that to be copied over because if you don't, you're gonna have to redo it. And obviously we wanna be efficient with our time. So I highly recommend doing that first. So let's say I'm ready for an option two. What I do immediately, rename my current layer to option one. Okay, and let's say this is white. Let's say like main walls will be white, right? So now that I've got this here, I want to do another option and let's say the client wants this to all be black, right? So I'm going to go over here, I'm going to right click and I'm going to duplicate. Now what's gonna happen, let me zoom it out, is on my cursor, I'm gonna get another Rhino file, right? And it's not gonna be, you know, dropped directly into the existing coordinates. A little annoying, but I'll show you what to do. So I'm gonna place it here. And I'm just gonna move it side by side. So I have two versions of the file, right? And the issue is because they're the same exact file, if I were to go and change the material, you see how they're changing at the same time? That's no good, right? Because obviously we want this to be broken from this. We need them to be separate. So now that you have this duplicated option, you're gonna go over here and you're going to make it unique. And what I wanna point out is, you know how I was saying like, get option one fledged out? Well, this is what I mean. Now your duplicate option actually has all the materials, right? You're not starting from scratch. So now you're gonna go over here, right click and click make unique. And now watch what happens. When I go over here and now I eye drop, let me make this black. Notice how just this material is changing. So that was just for the wall here. Let's do the same thing for the columns, right? So again, we're looking at the existing, and I'll make it another color. And you see how they're not changing? That is my point about making it unique. It doesn't affect it, right? We basically broke the link. So now things could actually get much easier to manage because now we can grab this and actually put it on a new layer. So watch this. So let's hit add layer. Let's call it option two. Okay, and I'm gonna change the layer it's on to option two black. So now what's gonna happen is I can actually toggle the layers, which option is on or off. But the issue is they're not in the same place and we wanna actually use the same camera angles. We can compare this option to that option. So to get in the right spot, you've got two methods. You could just hit sync and if you didn't move the model, it'll fall directly in the same spot. But you'll see when I do that, there's a slight mismatch. And that's because in the beginning of this project, I wound up moving the white model a little bit higher up. So I'm gonna click the white model and I'm just gonna make sure I grab all the same coordinates. So that's my Z height. Let's switch to black and I'll put that in there. So now they're perfectly matching and you'll see that flickering. That's Z flicker because they're literally on the same exact plane. It doesn't know which to display. But now when I toggle them on and off, toggle off white, look at that. Now I can have my different options. So one thing to remember about the D5 scene system is it actually remembers layer visibility, right? So if I were to go over here and let's call this option one, I'm just gonna rename this, option one front, okay? I can turn this off, option two, resync that, and now I'm going to make a new scene and we'll call this option two. And so now we got to turn off white because black is not visible. So I'm still here. I'm going to turn off white and I'm going to turn on black and resync. So now I can switch between the two and the correct models are loading. Okay. So this is nice if you're handling just materials. Okay. If your geometry is going to be different, because you know, clients are going to want to move masses around. You're not going to get away with just uh, materials, right? I'll show you how to take care of that. But 
keep in mind, you're going to want to use scenes and layers to leverage this. We've essentially built our own variant manager. And if you've got three, four, five options, it's the same thing. Just keep adding new layers and duplicating and make unique. If you don't make it unique, you're going to, you know, destroy your model, right? So let's say option three is actually a gray, but this area is much taller and a different material from the rest. So this is true for any app. I'm just using Rhino because that's where this came from. So let's make an option three. So how option three would work is I'd probably make a new layer for this upper region. So I'm going to go over here and we'll call this upper walls. And I'll just make this just a different color just so I can see it. Yellow. Put that in there and I'll change the properties to change this to upper walls. So I know that's all correct. I can grab this too. Go upper walls. And let's just say the geometry is changing. Let's say they want to go taller. So I'll just scale this up. Let's pretend like it's like there, for example, right? Now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to save this as an option. So I'm going to go file, save as, or save a copy up to you. And I'm going to call this option three. I'm going to put the, the option in the front of the file name. And the reason I do that is in D5, you'll see that it truncates the actual file name and you can't see it unless you expose it up here but there's no way of stretching the width of this column yet at least so now that i've done that i'm going to duplicate so again right click duplicate i'm going to place this guy right over here i'm going to make a new layer option three i'll call this gray plus tall upper right just so it's logical and we'll switch it to that layer that way it's going to be triggered the next thing right click make unique okay so now that we've done that just as a sanity check if i were to go here and change the color notice how it's not changing my option two so now that we've got the gray here that's okay but we didn't do the uppers right the upper is the same exact one as the one before right so that's no good so all you have to do is right click and replace from local. And the reason you're doing replace from local instead of reload is we have a different file name and a different file location. We didn't overwrite this file, right? It's coming from a different location. So I hit replace from local. I'm going to confirm. So I call that like option three. I do that. And boom, there we go. So now I've got the new geometry and this it's pulling in the source apps color because it, it overrode a material. I never applied anything here. So now it's really up to me what I want to do. And you know, generally you guys know how I work. I'll duplicate and then I'll change the color. So now this could be, let's say red. This could be something else, let's say purple. And now I need this to live where that is. So I'm gonna click this, sync it, right? Going to fly back. And I'm just gonna grab that Z height and again, you only need to do the Z height if your project hack them to move or any coordinates, right? So now that I've got that, I'm going to just go over here. Option two, going to hit new and let's call this option three. Okay. And now that I'm here, I'm going to turn off all my other options, sync it. And I just want to do the same thing. So I'm going to turn off option three for option two, sync it. And then option one, I'm going to turn off option three. So I know it's a little manual, but without a variant manager, that's kind of what we have to do, right? But there we go. So the cool thing is they share the same exact camera angle, same environment settings, same background, but the geometry and the materials are changing. If you have things like decals and entourage and things that are specific to each option, I would probably put it on the same layer or just do like option one entourage. Really up to you guys. Anyways, I found this to be the quickest way to handle options in D5. If you ever make changes to your search geometry, you just right click and you reload as needed. You guys saw how easy that was. It's not super complicated, but it's one of those things like if you never did it or never thought about it, you'd be like, well, how am I supposed to handle options? I found this to be the best way. So hope you enjoyed the video. As always, if you have any questions, drop it as a comment and please subscribe. See you next time.